Shout out to Edward Polanco on Patreon for 11 months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on my channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up, guys? Quezzy or No here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple logo setup in Cinema 4D. We're going to be using some simple techniques to get a cool logo display. Uh, and of course, you could use this for text or anything else. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the logo. I'm going to be using my Light Studio for this, as well as some materials from my V8 pack. But I also manipulate them a lot. So really, you could use any light setup. I also experimented with using just like one light. Uh, and that looked pretty cool. So you really can just add your own lights and mess around and see what the best look is for you. Uh, and also, we just want some simple reflective kind of metallic materials as well as a glow material. So it's nothing too crazy. Um, so I always use my own stuff from my store in these tutorials, but really they're not necessary. You can use any materials for this. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. At 100 likes, I will include the Cinema 4D download for you guys down below. You can also get it on my Patreon right now if you're a $5 tier member. Also, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm in Cinema 4D, and this is the setup as you can see, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. And the first thing we wanna do is add our logo. So I should have this copied, and I do. So you can see I have one of my buddy Crispy's logo um, here ready to go, basically with some AI paths. Uh, if you're not sure how to add a logo you just or how to add the paths, if you have an Illustrator 8 file, you can go to File Merge and select that file, and it will bring in the paths. Let's go ahead to Extrude, and I'm going to copy that four times for each path I have and add them all in. So they're all in an extrude and I'm just going to minimize them and then select them all. And we want to go to movement size and we're going to make this 10. So that basically just creates a depth of 10. If you're doing mo text, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, now we want to go to caps. And uh, for this one, I want to make the size five. This is going to be the front of our logo. So this is going to be five. Uh, this will be a curve and we can actually load in a preset if we want. Um, so I'm going to want something kind of like this one. So let's do that inner bevel one. And basically I'm going to take this second point and bring it towards the middle. And then I'm going to bring this third point and bring it towards the middle and bring it up. So now we get a pretty interesting bevel. As you can see here, it's kind of, ha it has an edge going around it. it. looks pretty interesting. You could make this bevel, whatever you want. That's just the one I set up. Uh, I'm going to press alt G to group this double click and call it front. Now the logo setup, let's go ahead and add our materials. So again, you can use whatever materials you want. I'm going to be showing you kind of how I use my materials. So I have this Chrome material. I'm going to double click to add that. I have this clean metal five. I'm going to double click to add that. Uh, I have this metal four. going to add that one. That's pretty good. I also added in an, uh, a sky, which is from this bubble sky. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll add that one last. This metal four, uh, we're going to leave that alone. This clean metal, though, we want this to be super simple. So really, this isn't even a metal because we're not going to be using the texture at all. So we're going to actually check off the bump and the normal. Go to the color. We'll make it a light gray. And then the mix strength on the texture, we're going to bring down to like five. So it's barely even seen. And you see we get this like white light gray reflective material. Uh, and this is going to be our main material. Uh, we're also going to use this Chrome material. You would have seen me use this in multiple other tutorials. I might have given this away as a download at some point, uh, but really this is a reflectant, a reflective metal and the reflectiveness is a spectral that has this color gradient on it. Basically, we're going to come to this and add a transparency and set the brightness to about um, 70 on the transparency and then that should be good. Now, we, one last thing is we want to go to the clean metal, our main material, duplicate it, Command-C, Command-V, double click on that and go to the reflectiveness and bump it down to like the 20, both the spectral and reflection. So this is a softer reflection and that's going to be the background material. And then finally, we are going to go ahead and create our own material that's going to basically just be our color. So I want mine to be pink. So I'm going to grab a pink. I'm going to go to luminance and do the same thing so we have a pink luminance material cool let's go ahead and add that clean material or our clean metal to our logo and cool we're set up here let's go ahead and duplicate that whole knoll and we're going to call this side 
and we're going to select all the extrude layers set the size to one and round on the caps go to object and make that five centimeters go to our views go to this top view and we want to move this back slightly and then let's go back to caps and bevel the outside so basically that makes that a little thicker so it protrudes out the side and we're going to leave that material uh, as the same one we used before but we're also going to duplicate it one time and add the pink material to it uh, and then on that one we're going to bring that back further so now we have three layers to our logo and it looks something like this looking pretty good let's minimize these uh, we can call this one color if we'd like but let's go to the front and copy and paste that one uh, and this one we want to add to an atom array so let's go here to our atom array grab that add that null to the atom array and we get this atom array effect now we want to go to our metal four and add that to the atom array and this one is like a like a more reflective metal like a more proper metal i guess so let's go to the atom array and set the sphere radius to 0.2 and that will make the cylinder radius 0.2 as well um, and we get something like this now you could actually bump this up to like 0.7 but 0.7 I'd say is the max because it becomes a little too strong um, now I don't like the caps for this one because it's a little too much going on on the edge so let's go to the extrudes set the size to about one and we could set this to round um, or whatever you'd like completely up to you but the final thing we want to do is go to that knoll and bring it forward so the atom array is sticking out a little more um, and if we rotate you can kind of see that uh, and I think that's a cool look let's minimize that go to the side copy and paste that one and now we're gonna select this and bring it to the furthest back so this is gonna be the most behind layer and we're actually gonna jack up the size of this one so select all the extrudes again go to the object and we're going to make this about 50. we're going to split this one up a little bit so we're going to add a cube and we're going to add a bowl so basically we can use the cube to um, clip some of this logo and make it a little more interesting so let's add the cube to like the top left part of the logo you could add it to any part i'm going to add it to like the top left and basically we're going to subtract this cube from the logo so add the logo um, or the duplicated side to the bowl and then add the cube below it and you can see it cuts that part out now we want to add that material to the bowl so everything is that material cool and we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that bowl and in that we're going to reverse so it says a subtract b which is subtracting the cube from our logo now we want to intersect it so now it becomes a full logo again obviously though we don't want that but we're going to copy and paste that one time go to the atom array duplicate that um, with command c command v delete what's in it and then add one of those bulls to that atom array and then the bull that's left over we want to go into the extrudes and bump them down to maybe 10 centimeters again and then bring them back to like the middle and for that we can also go to the caps and unbevel the outside so that looks pretty interesting and I'm actually going to bring that one back a little more. And I think we are done with our logo part of this. Now you could do more. Um, one thing that I did do here was add the uh, chrome material to that leftover bull in the atom array. So let's go do that. We'll actually get rid of the side material so it's just there. And this might be a little too thin. We might have to go like 20 here just so it's a little more visible and then bring it slightly more forward. Um, but you could add this chrome material to other places in the logo just to make it a little more interesting. I might even say you could go to this side one and add it there. So you can't see it now if I do a test render, but um, this chrome material will add in other colors. So you can see we're using mainly a pink, but that chrome with the reflective spectral uh, will bring some greens and some blues in there. So if we actually go to here and add a sky, uh, I can add this sky material to that and let's give this a test render maybe you'll be able to see some of those colors and there you go you can see some greens coming out here it looks a bit like a puke green but once we add our proper lighting um, and have the background this will be a little darker and the colors will come out a little like more subdued 
Uh, but let's go ahead and do that next at our background. So let's go to our objects and add a plane. And we're gonna wanna go to orientation plus Z. Switch over the camera view and move this to the back. Like so, cool. And we'll kind of center this with where our logo is since our logo is not perfectly centered. Let's use these uh, points and increase the size. So we have a nice big plane here. Let's kind of set up our view. So I want it to be something like this. That's pretty good. We could add a camera here, but I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Uh, but let's go to MoGraph Voronoi Fracture and add the plane into the Voronoi Fracture. And with the Voronoi, Voronoi Fracture selected, we want to go to Offset Fragments by 5, which gives us these little spaces in the fracture. And then we want to duplicate the plane. Uh, we're going to come here, press Command, and drag that pink color up to this duplicated plane and bring that back slightly so that sits behind the fracture and then that duplicated clean material with less refl uh, reflection we want to add to the Voronoi fracture and then we're pretty good I also added some spheres so we could do that and you can make them whatever material you want I think the original clean metal will work maybe decrease the size a little bit and spread these around Be sure to select them all and bring them back so they're against the plane or as close to the plane as possible. And then we could come in and decrease a couple of their sizes. Maybe increase that one actually, bring it forward a little. Cool. And then finally, you want to add some sort of lights. So like I said earlier, you could just go ahead and add um, a, a normal light for an over the top view so you get some strong shadows. Do whatever. Um, I merged my light studio with this project and then messed around with the lights for probably a good hour until I found something I liked. So if I merge with the Lightroom and delete all of the objects like so, then get the light, I can kind of mess with this a little bit. And we'll say this is good and give it a test render because um, it gets our effect across. This might be a little too much lighting, you would probably want to go a little bit darker, but the effect should work. And then if you render this out and go to Photoshop, I'll actually give you guys this PSD to download for free. Um, and basically you can create something like this. So you get some nice colors and it's like overall a really clean look, very colorful look too. Uh, I really like how this turned out. I'm going to speed through the render so you guys can see it, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like on it. At 100 likes, I'll give you guys the download. Um, so you guys can mess around with it yourselves and add your own logo or you can get it on my patreon right now Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed uh, I post a lot of tutorials So you might as well subscribe so you don't miss out on something you're interested in you can always unsubscribe later if it's not your thing Also follow me on Twitter at Quezzy and follow my Instagram. That's Quezzy. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace